Do you want to become a blockchain developer? Because I can show you everything that you need to know in order to get started. Hey, I'm Gregory and I built this YouTube channel, DAP University, in order to show you how to build decentralized applications or DAPs and become a blockchain developer. So let's jump inside my computer and I'll show you everything that you need to know in order to get started. So if you want to become a blockchain developer, first you need to figure out what kind of blockchain developer you want to be. And I'm assuming you probably want to be the kind of developer that's you know building decentralized applications or dApps. You want to be using the technology of the blockchain to build things that you know businesses and users can use. And that's different from you know being a core blockchain developer where you might work on uh, a blockchain technology or a protocol you know like Ethereum and trying to improve its consensus algorithm or something like that. This would be like if you wanted to become a web developer, you'd have to decide if you want to build, you know, websites or web applications, or if you wanted to work on a web protocol like HTTP or improve browsers or something like that. And most people who want to get into web development want to build websites or web applications. And similarly, you know, most people who want to get into blockchain development want to build decentralized applications. And most people who have a programming background, you know, who are trying to get into this have, uh, you know, some sort of background with web technologies or maybe mobile development or something like that. And that's typically the best path for them is to go from that background to building dApps. And if you're going to build things, you know, for the blockchain, then you should probably pick a blockchain. Now, you know, there's different blockchains out there. You could pick uh, Bitcoin, you could pick Ethereum. But, you know, I build things on Ethereum because Ethereum has smart contracts and this allows us to execute, you know, more advanced code on the blockchain. This actually allows us to build decentralized applications or dApps. That's what smart contracts allow us to do. They're the building blocks of these decentralized applications or dApps. And I'll kind of explain that more in a second and I'll show you what you need to get started to write smart contracts and build dApps and become a blockchain programmer. So what kinds of things could you build if you were going to be a blockchain developer? Well, there's lots of things. Um, one of the most popular things right now is to build your own cryptocurrency. And you can do this with something called an ERC20 token. And this basically allows you to create your own token on top of the Ethereum blockchain. That allows you to you know purchase tokens and transfer them between accounts and you can also use this for an ico and this is something that uh you know lots of people are doing right now they're holding icos they're raising capital for their business by minting their own crypto token and i actually have a uh, a demo ico website right here that i built and this is something that I have another video where I kind of walk you through this and show you, you know, what I did. This is uh, deployed to the Rinkeby Test Ethereum Network. And if you want to check out that video, you can. I'll put a link down in the description below. And I also have the code to this uh, uh, cryptocurrency token and the token sale smart contract on my GitHub. You can see that's here at GetDAP University. And if you can just browse through here and see the smart contracts that are you know listed this is the actual cryptocurrency token here so yeah that's the first thing are your own cryptocurrency and you know building an ico also people are building games right now on ethereum you might have heard of crypto kitties this is a really popular collectible game on the ethereum blockchain that kind of came out towards the end of last year and CryptoKitties is, you know, a game based on Ethereum that uses another Ethereum token technology to give tokens, you know, a unique identity. And they uh, basically have a graphic associated with each collectible token. And I have a video where I kind of talk about that and show you how to uh, understand CryptoKitties. So you can check that out. And you can learn to build your own game on Ethereum like this. Lots of people are doing that, and it's a really cool way to get into blockchain programming and have something to work towards and to build. Now, you could also build you know, some other kind of dApp that has a business use case that people want to use on the Ethereum blockchain, You know, something that uh, makes use of Ethereum's you know, unique 
characteristics. And a good example of that is Ethland. You know, there's a lot of financial tech apps out there or fintech um, that, you know, are built on the Ethereum blockchain. You know, Ethland is a decentralized lending platform. These are the kinds of things that, you know, you could, you could build with Ethereum. If you haven't checked out the Ethland dApp, you can just visit that here at ethland.io and read more about that yourself. And also one of the most exciting things to do with Ethereum development right now is to kind of figure out your own thing that you can do with decentralized applications or dApps. And that's what a lot of people are in a rush to do right now is to figure out, you know, what can we use Ethereum for and how can we build something that provides a lot of value to people and, you know, gets blockchain uh, more widely used and mass adopted. So that's a really cool challenge sort of once you get the hang of blockchain development, you can start building your own dApps and find new and creative ways to use the blockchain. Now that's, you know, some examples of the kinds of things that you can actually build on the Ethereum blockchain. And, you know, that's, that's what you could build if you were going to become a blockchain programmer. But how do you actually do it? You know, how do you get started learning to program on the blockchain? Well, I think the best way to get started is to just jump in and to learn by doing. And I've actually got a video tutorial that shows you how to build your first decentralized application or DAP. Um, and I'll walk you through step by step how to build a decentralized voting application where we hold an election between two candidates and we you know, allow users connected to the network to vote in the election. And so you can check that out uh, here on YouTube. It's a full two-hour tutorial where I walk you through step-by-step, step, and I even go through you know, some of the concepts uh, about the blockchain um, because that's also a really important uh, piece of the puzzle is how, how, do you, how does the blockchain even work? And so that's what I go through in that video. So this is the uh, tutorial that, or this is the dApp that we build in the tutorial. It's an election tutorial. And uh, the code to that is also on GitHub. You can go see that here. This is the election tutorial. And we can see the smart contracts here. This is the election smart contract that I walk you through building in the, in the tutorial. So yeah. Learn by doing. That's the best way to get started. Now, let's also break that down into the types of things that you need to know when you're going to be building decentralized applications and becoming a blockchain programmer. Now, the first thing is kind of learning the concepts. You know, like I said a second ago, the blockchain is just different from any other type of development. That's sort of the whole appeal, right? You know, it's building a decentralized application on the decentralized web. You know, you want an application that's trustless and secure and distributed. And, but how does that work? And like, what do all those things even mean? So I talk about those more in that video that I just mentioned, but let's kind of just take a quick, you know, overview of what those things are. You know, the blockchain is a decentralized network. And, you know, for on Ethereum, Every device that's connected to the blockchain is a node and it's peer to peer. So they all talk to one another and, you know, every device shares all the data on the blockchain and all the code on the blockchain and all these devices kind of participate together in, you know, running the network. So it's kind of like a network and a database all in one, which is, you know, different from a centralized model where you'd have a central web server with a central database and you would have, you know, just a client that would talk to that and get all that data back, right? So all the code doesn't live on a server. All the code lives on each device connected to the network. So, yeah, it's a network and it's a database all in one. And, you know, code is executed on the Ethereum blockchain with something called a smart contract. Now, smart contracts are the, you know, building blocks of our decentralized applications or dApps. And that's what we use to read and write data from the blockchain and, you know, do stuff with that data. If you want to kind of uh, do some more research and reading on, you know, how the blockchain works, especially the Ethereum blockchain, you can uh, go to ethereum.org and read more here. It talks about building uh, unstoppable applications 
Um, you can download, uh, you know, a wallet here. And uh, yeah, it's got some great articles and uh, kind of just more resources if you want to do some more reading here. Also, you can check out the Ethereum white paper if you want to get technical. You might have seen, you know, white papers floating around if you've ever looked at ICOs or if you've ever looked at other cryptocurrency, um, you know, websites or tokens or something like that. You know, they put out some sort of uh, overview of what their product is about. So here's the Ethereum white paper that you can read. And this can kind of get uh, a little technical at some times, but uh, it's really great if you want to get a deeper understanding of how Ethereum works. So you can check that out. It's on GitHub. That's an introduction to, you know, the conceptual side of blockchain development, learning a new technology altogether. Now, what about the nuts and bolts? What about, you know, becoming a programmer and, you know, writing code for the blockchain? Well, if you're going to write smart contracts on Ethereum, then you need to learn the Solidity programming language. And this is uh, the documentation for Solidity right here. Now, Solidity is a contract-oriented language, which basically means that, you know, smart contracts are the basic unit that we use to, you know, encapsulate data and behavior um, in our apps that we write in the, in the language. And, you know, it's, it's a language that looks a lot like JavaScript. So if you were going to just browse through um, some of the code, let's take a look here. The syntax looks, you know, somewhat familiar. If you've ever written JavaScript, um, you know, you can see just the function declarations and, uh, you know, declaring variables and things like that, right? And if you want a good introduction to Solidity, like I said, you can check out that other two-hour tutorial where I, you know, walk you through, you know, getting started with Solidity and writing your first smart contract and things like that. So once you've started you know, picking up Solidity, uh, it's good to use, you know, an IDE to run your smart contracts and, you know, see if they work. And there's a really good resource put out by Ethereum called Remix, which is an online browser-based IDE that allows you to, you know, develop your smart contracts in here and run them. And you can also deploy them to a test network. You know, you can debug them. You know, this gives you accounts in order to interact with your smart contracts. It's a really cool tool. Um, you can save these, you know, online and share them and things like that. So highly recommend checking out Remix if you haven't already. So those are the first two kind of basic things that you would need if you wanted to start, you know, programming, you know, smart contracts. You wanted to start programming the decentralized portion of your dApps you know, when you're trying to become a blockchain developer. Now, the other side of the equation is uh, building the you know, client side interactions for your dApp. So if you've ever developed a website before or a web application, you know, it's got a front end and a back end. And the front end is everything that the user sees when they're using their apps. You know, it's like all the layout and the buttons and everything that a user would use, you know, forms and things like that. And then you have the back end, which would be on a server. Now in a dApp, the back end, like we just said, is uh, all on the Ethereum blockchain, you know, with smart contracts, since those are the basic building blocks of the decentralized applications. Now the front end is all gonna be in standard, uh, you know, web technologies like HTML and CSS and JavaScript. So if you're going to become a blockchain developer, you need to know a lot of the technologies that already exist in web development. So if you're going to become a blockchain developer, you need to know JavaScript because, you know, that's going to be one of the primary languages you use to develop your front end applications, you know, in addition to just basic HTML and CSS, right? You need to know JavaScript, uh, but also JavaScript's really useful when developing smart contracts because... Uh, a lot of people write tests for their smart contracts with JavaScript uh, to simulate, you know, client-side interactions with the smart contract. And also, if you're going to be, you know, using your smart contracts inside some sort of console, uh, a lot of times you're using a JavaScript runtime environment, and you'll need to write JavaScript to interact with the smart contract in that kind of environment. So JavaScript is something you definitely need to know. 
And I also recommend, you know, learning a JavaScript framework, a, you know, a modern JavaScript framework like React.js, which allows you to, you know, build, uh, you know, your client side applications and manage all your JavaScript code. Um, I like React. I've used a lot of JavaScript frameworks over the years, and I think they do a good job once you get the hang of it. So that's something you could check out. Now, those are the technologies that you should probably learn if you want to become a blockchain programmer and build, you know, full stack decentralized apps, right? Now, beyond that, um, what are some other resources that you can use to learn? Well, um, you know, first and foremost, I built this channel so that you can learn to build decentralized applications or dApps. Um, and I highly recommend checking out that, you know, two, two hour tutorial that I keep mentioning uh, where I walk you through step by step how to build, you know, your first decentralized application or dApp. Um, so check that out and also be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to, you know, have more resources about how you can build decentralized applications and become a blockchain programmer. Now, now beyond that, there's lots of other good resources out there and I'll show you a few. You know, Ethereum uh, Stack Exchange is a really great resource. Um, now, this is a place, if you ever used Stack Exchange or Stack Overflow before, um, this is a place where, you know, you can go ask questions about, you know, Solidity and Ethereum and really any blockchain programming question. Um, and a lot of times if you're Googling, you know, answers to questions that you have when you're developing decentralized applications, you know, the Ethereum Stack Exchange will usually come up in Google. So definitely check this out as a great place to ask questions and find answers. Um, you know, another place is Gitter. So if you're not familiar with Gitter, it's basically a chat application built on top of GitHub. So a lot of these GitHub organizations um, will basically just have their own chat rooms built on top of them. It's, you know, it's a web-based interface. So you can go find, you know, the Gitter for Ethereum, right? And it's got different rooms. It's got rooms for tutorials, um, rooms for Solidity. Um, these are all, you know, ones that I've subscribed to. So you can go in here and ask questions for real people and get real-time results. And a lot of times you'll have, you know, real experts in here that you can interact with. So that's a great resource. You know, another resource is uh, Reddit. You know, Reddit has Ethereum dev uh, subreddits, and these are great places to find tips and tricks when you're building decentralized applications and, you know, developing smart contracts. And it's also a great place for you to ask questions, or if you build a dApp, you can post it to the Ethereum, you know, subreddit here. So if you haven't already, be sure to check that out. All right, so that's it, guys. I hope you all enjoyed that. I hope that was helpful. If there's anything that I missed or you didn't understand, feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below. And like I said, be sure to check out that tutorial if you want a really good jump start on how to become a blockchain programmer. And also be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos about how you can become a blockchain developer and build decentralized applications on the Ethereum blockchain. And until then, thanks for watching DAP University.